Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started with today's webinar. I'm Maggie Schilling. I'm the, or I'm the Program Manager for the National Transit Database. Today's session, the audio will be only through uh, Voice over IP, your computer speakers. If you're having any trouble hearing us, please go ahead and uh, put a comment in the Q&A pod in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. We'll have someone try and help you, tr you troubleshoot the audio. Um, I'm going to jump in a little bit, do a little housekeeping items here. We have a few uh, resources here for you in the webinar room. Um, on the bottom, as I said, the Q&A pod is how you'll be submitting questions to us. Uh, we're going to take all questions at the end of the presentation, but please feel free to enter any comments or questions that you have throughout the entire presentation. We'll answer them all at the end. We also have here for you a notes pod. The notes pod, if you'll notice, there's a few really useful links in there. We have information on where you can find the TAM final rule, um, where you can find the asset inventory final requirements, and where you can find copies of the guidebooks that were put out. Uh, today we're going to cover just the asset inventory requirements to, that are reportable to the NTD, um, but we have had other sessions on the TAM final rule and the reporting guidebooks for the, the performance metrics. Um, so that information is there in the notes pod. We also have copies of all of the presentations in the upper left-hand corner. Um, you can download any of the presentations from this webinar series. These will also be made available through both the NTD website and the TAM website at the end of the series. We'll be posting um, Q and, uh, links to all of the Q&A from all of the webinars, as well as uh, a recorded version of each webinar. All right, so people here in the room, as I said, I'm Maggie Schilling. I'm with the Office of Budget and Policy here at the Federal Transit Administration. I'm the program manager for the National Transit Database. I have with me in the room here today Ms. Shadoni Smith, who is also with the Office of Budget and Policy. She's the program manager for the Transit Asset Management role. Um, the other two that you have on here, John Georges and Candace Key, are also here at the FTA. They're not joining us today for this session, but you may hear them in future sessions, or you may have heard them chime in in past sessions. Okay, so today's agenda. This presentation is probably going to take about 20 to 30 minutes, after which we're going to have um, a question and answer session. Uh, I anticipate this will probably take about an hour from beginning to end. Um, we are going to cover uh, background, the NTD reporting requirements, the TAM performance metrics, and then, as I said, a QA. and a Okay. So I'll jump into it a little bit here. So this is a little bit of background on the sources of authority for these changes to the National Transit Database. So MAP 21 added additional language to the transit law that, um, that asked the National Transit Database to begin collecting information on asset inventory information and condition assessments. Um, this is also obviously very closely related with the TAM rule and the TAM rule final requirements. So we decided to kind of present these together. The TAM final rule, um, many of the reporting elements for TAM are going to be captured through the National Transit Database. However, the asset inventory is actually a slightly separate piece of legislation that was added directly to the NTD rule. But you'll see here on the right-hand column for the TAM, the performance measures, the performance targets, and um, the data reporting for your condition assessments and flow zones will all be reported through the NTD. I'm going to cover some of that as we go through because we're going to collect most of that information through the asset inventory module. Okay, I'm hearing that I'm getting a lot of feedback. I'm going to give it one more moment. Can people please send us a couple messages if you're hearing okay, if you're having trouble? Let us know how it's working out there. Okay, I've readjusted my phone a little bit. All right, thanks so much, guys. We're going to keep going. All right, so implementation timeline. Um, we are going to open up the system for optional reporting in report year 2017. As you see here, everyone that reports to the NTD reports based on their own fiscal year. So if you have a fiscal year that runs from July to June, your report's due to the NTD in October. If you have a fiscal year that runs October to September, your report's due in January, et cetera. So, for each of these, people will be reporting based on their own fiscal year as they have um, for all past years for the NTD. We're going to open up, as I said, reporting in report year 2017, so beginning in the fall of 2017. Um, on October 31st, those July to June report, those July to June fiscal year agencies will be able to begin reporting their asset inventory optionally. We will not require it in 2018. Mandatory reporting does not begin until, or in, 
we will not require it in 2017. <laughs> Mandatory reporting will begin in 2018. Um, we are going to open it up optionally for a couple of reasons, namely that it gives people a little bit more time to enter if they have large inventories. Um, the system will save the inventory and repopulate the next year, and then you can just make adjustments to the inventory information moving forward. So opening up in 2017 will give you the opportunity, um, if you have a large amount of assets, to begin reporting and spread that out over two years. But we will not require reporting for either the asset inventory or um, the performance against your condition assessments until report year 2018. However, prior to that, you will have to, pr you will have to report your targets. We'll get into this a little bit more as we go through the presentation. Okay, so what's reportable? This is just a quick overview of what is what you will be required to report to the NTD. As I said, if you would like to download this presentation, in the upper left-hand corner, there's the presentation pod. You can download, print this off um, for your reference, hang it on your cube, whatever you want to do. We have the different asset types here. Your passenger facilities, you're required to inventory all passenger facilities that you use, but you are not required to give us a condition assessment unless you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. You'll see all the way down for capital or for condition assessment requirements, we're only requiring condition assessment if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. For passenger facilities, the condition assessment metric is an actual condition assessment. I'm here calling it condition assessment um, what the performance metric is for TAM. So don't, don't feel confused. We are not asking for condition assessment of tracking guideway. The condition assessment metric for tracking guideway is the performance restriction metric. So the percentage of your track under, um, under performance restriction as we've gone over in the guidebooks if you've joined us for those. Again, administrative and maintenance facilities are reportable to us only if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. Condition assessment, again, is only required if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. All of your track and guideway is reportable as an inventory. You are only required to report a performance restriction um, metric against that if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. Revenue vehicles, again, all revenue vehicles are reportable as an inventory, but you are only required to create a useful life benchmark if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. Um, service vehicles are only reportable to us if you fund the replacement, so if you own it. And again, you only have to provide a useful life benchmark if you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the details a little bit more. Facility reporting. So as I said, you have to report facilities that you use in the provision of public transportation and you have to indicate if you're partially or fully responsible, responsible to, fundle, to fund ugh, um, the renewal or replacement of any component or the facility in its entirety. All right, so here's what this means. As I said before, administrative and maintenance facilities. Um, all administrative and maintenance facilities that you own are reportable to the NTD. If you have full or partial capital replacement responsibility for your administrative and maintenance facilities, they're reportable as an inventory, and you have to provide a condition assessment. Um, if you do not own, if you do not have any capital replacement responsibility for your administrative or maintenance facilities, they are not reportable to the NTD as an inventory. Um, this applies to all reporter types. So 5311s and 5307 recipients, as well as 5310 recipients, if you own the administrative maintenance facility, if you're responsible for capital replacement, it is reportable to the NTD as an inventory. You'll see here on each slide, I have a little bit, I won't go over too many of these details. If you've joined us for um, the initial set of these when we posted the requirements in the Federal Register soliciting comment, this, these will look familiar to you, but I have a little bit of information on what we currently report and what we'll now be reporting, um, and so you can reference this as we go forward. Okay, passenger stations and parking. All passenger stations and parking used in public transportation are reportable to the NTD as an inventory. Again, this is for all reporter types. Passenger stations and parking facilities are substantial structures. So we're looking for stations that are on separate right-of-way, um, have a considerable amount of infrastructure, so have a ticket booth and a place for customers to wait. We're not looking for bus stops or basic bus shelters. That's not what we're considering a passenger station. So a bus stop is not reportable as part of your um, asset inventory. We're looking for substantial passenger facilities and stations. A little bit more information is available in the guidance that's posted on the NTD website. 
Right now, that guidance is a standalone document. It will be rolled into um, the NTD policy manual reporting guidance going forward um, for the years that this becomes mandatory reporting. Again, all reporter types, all passenger stations and parking facilities that you use in the, in the provision of public transportation, but conditioned assessments are only required for facilities for which you have a capital replacement responsibility. Okay, tracking guideway reporting. If you operate or purchase transit service over fixed guideway, you must report the rail track guide and guideway data and indicate if you're fully or partially responsible to fund its replacement. So all track and guideway that you use in service is reportable as an inventory. Okay, so we'll go into a little bit more of the details behind this. So rail track, what we're asking you to report is track mileage by type, so tangent or curved, and this is in linear feet. I believe we also give you the option to do percentage of your track. Um, you choose whether you're going to report it as percentage or in linear feet. This applies to all reporter types with rail fixed guideway and all track that you use in the provision of public transportation. Fixed guideway. So all reporter types with rail fixed guideway must report an inventory of their fixed guideway to the NTD. Um, all guideway and equipment that you use in the provision of public transportation. So what we are asking for is guideway by construction type. So essentially is it elevated, is it tunnel, is it at grade? Um, and that you divide each of these into 10-year age buckets. So what we're looking for is if you, have, if you put in 15 miles of your guideway um, in 1980, that's reportable in 1980. If you put in 20 miles in 1990, it's reportable in 1990. These are static 10-year buckets. They will not change over time. You will just be allocating the amount of fixed guideway infrastructure that you have into each 10-year bucket. Um, as I said, <clears throat> the NTD will auto-populate all of your information year to year once you enter it the first time. That will be populated going forward. It will stay in those distributions until you go in and make adjustments. Um, so you will only have to, to make changes in the out years. All right, so substations. Again, all substations are reportable to the NTD as an inventory. So all reporter types with rail fixed guideway that have substations, um, all substations that you use in the provision of public transportation. We're asking for a count of substation structures and substation equipment divided into 10-year buckets. So if you have 100 substations, 50 of them are from 1950, 50 of them get reported in 1950. Um, again, our substations are all reportable as an inventory. Um, you only, substations do not have a standalone condition assessment per se. They're part of your track and guideway infrastructure. Um, and as I mentioned before, track and guideway infrastructure, the performance metric for that is percent of, um, percent of track, percent of your track under performance restriction that is only reportable if you have capital replacement responsibility for your track and guideway infrastructure. Signals. Um, again, all reporter types with rail fixed guideway have to report um, an overview of the signals. We're asking for percentage of your total signal assets divided into 10-year age buckets. So this would, be, this would be based on the value of your signal system um, to you know, your best estimate, internal estimates. So if you put into place 75% of your signal system was installed in 1920, then 75% of it will get reported as 1920. Power infrastructure, this is the same. So all reporter types with rail fixed guideway will report their power, um, their power structure, so their catenary and third rail that they use in the provision of public transportation, a percentage of the total value of third rail or catenary in 10-year age buckets. So again, um, what you're looking for is the total value of the system and in what decade was it installed or substantially rehabilitated. All right, vehicle inventory. So revenue vehicle inventory will look very similar. For the most part, we have not changed the elements of the revenue vehicle inventory that we're collecting. We're adding a useful life benchmark um, to uh, collect that transit asset management program rule and service vehicles. Um, this will be a new, we'll go through that in a little bit more detail. So revenue vehicles, all revenue vehicles that you use in public transportation are reportable as an inventory, and you, you include a useful life benchmark for all fleets that you are responsible for capital replacement. Service vehicles are a little bit different. Um, you'll report all service vehicles um, as an inventory only if you have capital replacement responsibility, and a useful life benchmark also if you have capital replacement responsibility. All right, as I said, Revenue vehicles, 
for urban and rural, this will look very similar. If you're a 5307 or 5311 reporter that's currently reporting to the NTD, um, the data elements that you report for your, your revenue vehicle inventory are the same. So with um, contractor provided fleets, we're still going to be asking you for a representative vehicle the same way that we always have. Um, if you have capital replacement responsibilities, we will now be asking you for a useful life benchmark. This applies to all reporter types. The big change here is that 5310 recipients um, that are providing public transportation service, so what is considered public transportation, will now be reporting those vehicles as an inventory to the NTD. So that the data elements that they will be using are exactly the same as what the current rural reporters, so the current 5311 reporters are reporting. Those will be the same data elements that the 5310 reporters that are required to report based on um, providing public transportation. So open door service essentially is what it will be considered public transportation for the sake of 5310 reporters. All right, service vehicles. Service vehicles, again, all reporter types. So if you have any service vehicles that you, um, that you use in public transportation and you're responsible for capital replacement, those are reportable as an inventory and you have to provide us a useful life benchmark. So service vehicles, what we're considering, considering a service vehicle are any road legal vehicles or major construction equipment. Um, small shop level equipment like forklifts, golf carts, et cetera, are not included in this inventory. So we're looking for your supervisor cars, um, any cars that you have in service that your, your maintenance people may use to get from one location to another, um, any of your wreckers, uh, any of your work trains, et cetera. These are what would be reported um, as service vehicles. If you have large pieces of construction equipment, if you have cranes, et cetera, that you own, um, that's reportable as an inventory. If there are things that you lease or that you rent, those are not reportable. Only pieces of service equipment that you own or are responsible for capital replacement are those that have to be reported. All right. So a couple of notes on 5311 reporting. So 5311 reporters have um, always historically reported a revenue vehicle inventory to us. There is no change. The major change for 5311 recipients is that they'll now be required to provide an inventory of their administrative and maintenance facilities if applicable. So only those administrative and maintenance facilities for which they have capital replacement responsibility. Um, they also must provide an inventory of all passenger facilities Again, if applicable, if you have a large bus transfer station, um, if you have, um, we, I think we only have one rural rail provider, but um, that rural rail provider is also required to report all passenger stations. And performance information is applicable. Again, you'll remember the performance metrics are reportable on assets for which you have capital replacement responsibility. You must set a target and then you must report um, your performance against that target. Reporting will continue to generally be done by state DOTs for 5311, um, 5311 recipients as part of a group plan or as part of sub-recipient as they've been in NTD historically. All right, and a couple of notes on 5310 reporting. So 5310 reporters will be reporting into the NTD for the first time. Um, the only requirements that they will have to report to the NTD, a basic, uh, a basic contact information, and any of the applicable asset inventory elements. So any revenue vehicles used in public transportation service and any passenger stations that they may um, use in, in public transportation service, and then any facilities for which they have full or partial capital replacement responsibility. We don't anticipate that there will be many 5310s that own their own um, administrative or maintenance facilities, um, but if you do, then, that, then those are reportable to the NTD. Again, reporting will generally be done by the state DOTs, as part of a group plan or as part of a sub-recipient reporting structure through the NTD. All right, so I'm going to go over the performance metrics, the TAM performance metrics, um, just sort of quickly. These are, these are your targets for these performance metrics will be reported through the NTD. So the first round of targets, if you remember from the TAM rule, um, have to be reported in January of 2017. This is a congressional stipulation in the law we don't really have any discretion over this, this decision. Um, the law basically dictated that within three months of implementation of this rule, the first performance, tar performance targets must be reported to the FTA. These are the performance targets that you'll be reporting. So for equipment, percentage of vehicles that have met or exceeded their useful life benchmark. For rolling stock, the percentage of revenue vehicles within a particular asset class that have met or exceeded their useful life benchmark. 
for infrastructure, the percentage of your guideway or directional route miles with performance restrictions by class. So that's basically by mode. If you have a commuter rail service and a heavy rail service, you'll have a percent of guideway directional route miles with performance restrictions for each of those modes. And facilities, percentage of facilities with a condition rating below three on the FTA transit economics requirements model um, scale. So you'll basically have a target for each major facility type. Those are your administrative facilities, your maintenance facilities, your passenger facilities, and your parking facilities. So you have a performance target for each of those. For your infrastructure, you'll have one performance target per mode. For your rolling stock, you'll have a useful life benchmark for each vehicle type. So um, for your buses, you'll have one useful life benchmark uh, target. For your heavy rail cars, you'll have one useful life benchmark target. Um, equipment, the same thing, except there are three types of equipment. Um, we, or these are essentially service vehicles for, this, for um, the sake of this metric. Um, one for rubber tire vehicles and heavy, uh, heavy equipment, one for steel wheel vehicles, and one for regular vehicles. So just that would be basically um, your supervisor cars, et cetera. So you'll have a target for each of those. All right, so annual NTD reporting requirements for TAM. Um, as I said, the first targets have to be entered into the NTD system in January 2017, and those will be targets for your fiscal year 2017. Um, they will be reported in some cases well into the fiscal well into fiscal year 2017 for some properties. As I said, this was a congressional mandate. We have very little discretion over this, meaning we have zero discretion over this. It is required in law. Um, after that, your targets are going to be reported with each annual NTD report. So if you're normally a September or an October reporter, um, you'll enter your fiscal year's target in October with your annual report. It will be the target for the next fiscal year. So in fiscal year 2017, you'll report your target for fiscal year 20, 2018, et cetera. And as I said, one target for each motor vehicle type. All right, so ongoing data requirements. Beginning in report year 2018, um, you, will have to, you will have to begin reporting um, your performance against, your, against the targets that you've been reporting since January of 2017. So you'll give us your projected performance targets for the next fiscal year, entered with your annual report, as I said before. Um, for, for your facilities condition and performance assessments, um, in the first year, 2018, is the first year that you'll be required to enter um, some of your facilities condition assessments. We are basically rolling this out over a three-year period. So in year one, um, we're requiring a minimum of one-third of your, of your facilities um, will have a condition assessment reported into the NTD and report your 2018, one, a minimum of one-third in 2019, and the remainder in 2020. Um, if you choose, you can, you can put all of your condition assessments in in 2018. Um, but condition assessments are required, the facilities condition assessments. This is part of the guidebook that we've just put out. If you have comments on this, um, the, the guidebook requirements, please submit them to us. But the guidebook requirements stipulate that a condition assessment for each facility is done once every three years. That's part of why we're, we are rolling this out over a three-year period. In the fall of 2018, you'll also begin uploading your narrative report. So this is the narrative report for your, for your TAM plan. Um, it is a short report that's essentially um, intended to explain um, your progress against your targets over the, over the past year. So this is your chance to explain why um, or how you met the targets that you set, what happened in your operating environment that um, prevented you from meeting those targets, et cetera. So that narrative report will be uploaded to the NTD as an attachment each year with your annual report beginning in 2018. All right, so that gets us through um, the requirements and the, the asset inventory information. So as I said, you can find a copy of the new asset inventory reporting guidance and data requirements on the NTD website, www.transit.dot.gov slash NTD. If you have any additional questions, all of my contact information is here. Please feel free to get in contact with me. You can shoot me an email. You can give me a call. I'd be happy to help you um, figure out how these requirements apply to your specific property. And with that being said, we're going to jump in and see if there are some questions um, that we're ready to answer now.